welcome to Franklin Forge. Uh, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you've purchased one of my do-it-yourself knife making kits. And in this video, we're gonna go through all the steps uh, to finish your knife with primitive tools. In the kit, you're gonna receive a pre-cut profile. And the particular steel for this blade is gonna be 1095. Uh, so we'll go through the steps of heat treating it and, and grinding it and finishing it out. You'll also receive some pre-made knife scales. These are already shaped, so no grinding is required on them. You basically just have to attach them to the blade using the included brass pins. With that, let's get started. All right, we're here in the grinding room, and typically when I'm grinding a knife, um, I'm gonna be using a, a machine like this. This is a two by 72 belt grinder. Uh, most of you probably aren't gonna have something like this. Uh, there are some cheaper options, uh, like one by 30 belt grinders that you can get, say at uh, Harbor, Harbor Freight or some other hardware store like that. Um, so this is what I do. I understand this is a high-end machine, but the purpose of this video is to showcase you uh, a more of a primitive and, and uh, cost-effective way to uh, grind this knife. So we're gonna go over here and show you the setup that I have um, and some different options that you can use uh, for grinding your knife. Starting with your most basic tool and, and your cheapest is a simple file. Uh, and you totally can. I've got my blade um, locked up right here in the vise and you can just use a file to file your bevels down. Now I understand this is a very time consuming process, um, but it does, does give you a lot of control over the angle and uh, everything. So that is the intro and the cheapest way to do it. Um, what we're gonna be showcasing today, because most people have one, is an angle grinder. Um, and there's different wheels and stuff that you can get for the angle grinders. I've got a hard wheel on here. Um, and another option is a sanding wheel. So this actually has little strips of sandpaper on that. And you can get, these are nice because you can get them in different grits. Uh, this one is um, I think about a 60 grit or so, or maybe a 36, somewhere around there, but you can get finer grits and that will help you get your, your scratches out of your blade. But for this purpose, we're gonna be using a hard wheel and a battery powered angle grinder. So I'm gonna put my safety gear on and we're gonna get started. All right, so we've gone in the grinding room, as I've demonstrated, and pre-ground our bevels onto this blade. Now, we, we're we gonna end up going up a little bit higher onto the blade, but right now we're focusing on just removing some of that material for our cutting edge to help ensure that we get a, a, a solid quench and hardness throughout our blade, because the steel we're using is 1095. And 1095 is a, a shallow hardening steel, so we want to pre-grind those bevels a little bit so that we ensure that we get uh, hardness all the way through. Once we're quenched and tempered, um, then we will um, come back and we'll go a little bit further up on these grinds and, and uh, finish the blade out. Just using a simple pair of cheap pliers here, um, nothing too fancy. Um, and I've got a map gas. It's important that you use the yellow can map gas. Um, propane um, won't get near as hot as we need it to uh, for the quench. And you can get these relatively cheap at a hardware store. Uh, the oil we are using today is an actual quenchant oil, uh, like a, an engineered oil, but you can use canola oil for this, which is really cheap at your grocery store, and you can, you can quench it in that. Um, but in this case, we're gonna actually use some uh, uh, engineered quenching oil. So I'm gonna start heating the blade up, and then uh, we'll quench it, and hopefully you can see uh, what we're looking for as far as colors go. Three, two, one. Can you take that, Jared? Watch the tip, it'll be hot. Oh, I see some gray on there. It's a good indicator. So we've got our blade out of the quenching oil. And one of the things I like to do 
uh, is come over to the, uh, to the Anvil and grab my file. Any file will really do. Um, and then we're gonna check the hardness of the blade. So what we're looking for is for the blade or the file to not bite into this blade and for it to skate off. So I'm pressing pretty hard and we're not getting any biting at all. So that shows that we've got a hard blade. And the next thing we need to do, because this is too hard for use, it'll be too brittle. It'll hold an amazing edge, but it'll be too brittle for everyday use. So we need to temper it. And tempering is adding some heat into it to help control the hardness of the blade, our rock well. So we've got an oven over here and I'm gonna put it in the oven at uh, 500 degrees and that's gonna get us about 59 Rockwell. So let's head on over to the oven and throw it in there. And we're gonna do that for an hour, two times. So we've got our blade uh, freshly out of the temper here and it's ready to grind our final bevels. Um, as before, I'm gonna continue using the angle grinder and I'm going to grind the bevels up where I want them. Um, this is just what I'm going to do. You don't have to follow this. You can, you can keep those as shallow as you want. And then we'll switch over to the uh, file and uh, we'll use that file to even up our grind lines. And then we'll finish with some uh, sandpaper and so that we have a nice clean finished blade. So I'm gonna put my safety gear on and we're gonna get to it. All right, so we're out of the grinding room here using the angle grinder. Uh, we use files to refine um, our grind marks, and then we finish with a little bit of uh, sandpaper uh, to really clean everything up. So I'm leaving this shiny the way that it is. You could easily darken this up using even vinegar. Uh, you could use a ferric chloride acid. Uh, you could use a gun blue that you can get at uh, pretty much any gun store and put a dark uh, finish on this. Uh, we're going to leave it shiny because I want to showcase how quickly and, and easily you can finish these up with some pretty basic tools. Now that we've got that refined, we're going to move on to um, putting the handle together. One of the first things you need to do with this is since you've been handling this, we need to uh, degrease it with something. Um, there's many different things you can use. I use acetone, so I'm just going to take a little acetone and clean that surface up pretty good. All right, so for this purpose, we're gonna be using some uh, five minute epoxy. This stuff's uh, very cheap. You can get it at a hardware store. You could use super glue if you were in a pinch. Um, this is gonna be a better option for you though. So that's what we're gonna use today. And we're gonna be gluing these scales onto um, the knife. So one of the first things I do is I go ahead and take a file and file down the one side of the pin so it's flat uh, because it'll have a um, kind of a cut mark in it from uh, using a pair of pliers like this to cut it. And you can also, these are gonna be oversized so you'll need to cut them uh, to length. So I'll go ahead and make sure that they're flush with one side of my scale, and then I'll start mixing up my epoxy. This is a two-part epoxy, um, so we have to combine them, make sure they're really well combined. All right, now that it's good and mixed up, I'm gonna add a thin, and it doesn't need much, we're just using a thin layer to coat on the scales. And we're gonna put this on both sides as well. So this will go on the scales and it'll go on the knife as well. <clears throat> so that's the left side. If you put too much of this stuff, it, it becomes a nightmare and really hard to clean up. So have your acetone or uh, degreaser or something. Acetone does work the best with this epoxy. Um, have it at the ready. I'm just going to slide these guys on, just like that. Flip it over and do it to the right side. Slide that on. 
and now we've got our scales installed. If you notice, the pans are high, but once the epoxy dries up in about five, 10 minutes, we'll use a file to file these down so that it's flush um, with the handle. But the next step that you need to do is get some uh, sort of clamps, a C-clamp, or even clamp it up in a vise so that you clamp this down. It'll help push out some of the excess epoxy. And then once that epoxy comes out, you'll use more of your acetone to clean all your surfaces, specifically up here where the handle meets the blade. So we have our handle all glued up, and but our pins on one side are a little proud. So we're just gonna take a simple file and um, file those down. All right, there we go. So we've got our pins ground down and that completes the do-it-yourself knife making kit. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. I use very simple tools that you can get pretty much anywhere and uh, we were able to finish it out. Um, the only thing left is to sharpen it and you know, I'll leave that up to you. Um, as far as sharpening goes, um, everyone prefers to sharpen their blades uh, in different ways. There are different ways to finish this out and I definitely push you to, to try a different method. Uh, you can darken this, as I mentioned before, uh, with various me uh, methods. You can use mustard, you can use uh, vinegar, uh, ferric chloride, a gun blue from a gun store. Um, you don't even have to use these scales. If you want to put wood on it or even leave the scales off of it and just kind of round it off and make it super uh, slim, you can totally do that. So, but if you, whatever finish you decide and however you decide to finish this, um, I do urge you to uh, tag me in it on my Instagram, the Franklin Forge, because I want to see what you guys do with these. Um, I'm excited that you bought one. And I'm excited to see you finish it out. So uh, thanks again for watching and thanks again for purchasing one of the do-it-yourself knife making kits.